Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards, without any of that. And last time, we discussed the humility of Jesus and how it could be seen in his relationship with God the Father. Today, a related topic, the prayer life of Jesus. And when Jesus saw the multitude running together, he threatened the unclean spirit, saying to him, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command thee, go out of him, and enter not any more into him. And crying out and greatly tearing him, he went out of him, and he became as dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples secretly asked him, Why could not we cast him out? And he said to them, This kind can go out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Mark 9 24-28. Jesus never kept it a secret that praying and fasting were powerful weapons from God and needed to be practiced in order to drive away certain kinds of evil. He prayed very often, despite being God himself. And rising very early, going out, he went into a desert place, and there he prayed. Mark 1.35 And having dismissed the multitude, he went into a mountain alone to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. Matthew 14.23 Jesus often goes out to pray in deserted, lonely places in the Gospels. These are just a couple of the verses describing this practice. He would later explain his reason for doing this. Take heed that you do not your justice before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you shall not have a reward of your Father who is in heaven. And when ye pray... You shall not be as the hypocrites that love to stand and pray in the synagogues and corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But thou, when thou shalt pray, enter into thy chamber, and having shut the door, pray to thy father in secret, and thy father, who seeth in secret, will repay thee. Matthew 6, 1 and 5 to 6 Not that our prayers are somehow ruined if someone sees us praying, but that we should never pray for recognition or the appreciation of human beings. In fact, to the best of our ability, we should try to keep our prayer lives from being noticed by others so that other people will look up to us less and up to God more. We should try to remove self-absorption and pride from our prayer life as much as possible by removing the opinions of others as a factor when praying. This is why Jesus so often went to pray on his own, in places where he was unlikely to be interrupted or distracted, only rarely reciting prayers in front of his disciples, and only to teach them. And it came to pass that as he was in a certain place praying, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. Luke eleven one to four. So the prayer life of Jesus was thoroughly centered around God, and at every point he did whatever could be done to place its focus on God, and to seek solitude with God in prayer, avoiding showy public displays. However, He never forbid people from praying together for a common cause. In fact, he recommended it. Again I say to you, that if two of you shall consent upon earth, concerning anything whatsoever they shall ask, it shall be done to them by my Father who is in heaven. For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 19-20 So, being more like Jesus in prayer means remembering the importance of faithful prayer and keeping God in the center of your prayer life, praying alone with God in secluded places whenever possible, but we can also pray together for common causes. Next time, we'll look at the love of Jesus for the faithful and the various shapes it took. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.